So here we have our new file we're ready to create the application. So first let's structure what we're going to do. First we're going to create some data and I'm just using comments in here to structure what I want to build out. Then we'll have to display the title, display some menu so we can make a selection of a city. We'll then display the first chart and then display the second chart. Now let's add some of the data values that we need to create. The first thing that we need to create is going to be a selected city state. So what we need to do there is create that particular value. And there we have a state variable that is called selected city. The next step is to actually create an array that will hold the name of our city locations or just locations, the country flags and the colors that we want to use in any charts. And this is going to be an array composed like so. So we've got New York, the USA flag, and the color red. Now we need to create an array, sorry, a, a struct, not an array, of what the data is that we're going to put the rainfall in, the, the, how are we going to do hold the weather data. And that is simply a simple struct that looks like this. So we're creating a struct weather data, it's going to be identifiable. We're using the UUID to generate a unique ID, so it's identifiable. We'll have a month and a value which will contain our rainfall. The final step is then to build an array which is going to contain all of the values that we want to put in to our charts. And this looks quite long, but it's relatively simple to understand. So what we've got here is an array containing a city and some data. So we're saying that the var city rain is going to be an array. It's going to have city New York and the data is going to be able to a subarray effectively of weather data, this struct, with some values. And we create one for each of our locations. And in this array, we've got uh, New York is at position zero, Amsterdam position one, and Ibiza is at position two. If we go back up, to our city data, you'll notice that I've actually positioned these in exactly the same order because we make a reference link to that. So now that we have the data created, what we need to do is start to create the title and the menu. So the first thing we'll do is create an H stack to contain our title and menu and we'll add some padding to that. So now let's add in the title and we'll put the title here first like so, and let's just uh, use the indenting. You'll notice that occasionally the preview will sometimes show the actual completed application. This is because it's beta software. So we've now got rainfall data here. I'll delete this text at the top in a moment, but let's just add in the menu now so that we've actually got something that looks like it should do. So let's again just select this text over here, indent, and there we go. We've got select location. Let's get rid of the text up here, like so, and rebuild the preview. And there we have now our rainfall data and select location. And if I tap this on the preview, it should bring up the menu, and therefore I can make a selection. Okay, that is looking good apart from the fact that the preview keeps swapping up of the completed application. That notwithstanding, this is all looking good so far. Now that we've got our data in place and the menu and title, we can actually create our first chart. So what I'm going to do is paste in the text to create the first chart, and then I'll actually go through and explain what it's actually doing. So let's pop the text in here. Code, there it is. And I'll just make sure that I'm selecting everything. And notice I've got an error there, cannot find chart in scope. Of course, because I created this earlier, I forgot to import the charts framework. So now that's in place, and now we should see the error has gone away. So let's just select all this and make sure that we're indenting it as nicely as possible. There we go, and I'll work through what this actually means. Ignore the fact that that keeps popping up, that's the completed version seems to be a bug in this particular beta too. 
So there we have. <coughs> now we've got a, a location menu, title, and we've got the first chart. So let's explain what this does. First we create a chart. We're still in the V stack and we're going to loop through city rain using the ID dot city. If we go back up to our data, city rain contains all the weather data and city has a city identifier, New York, Amsterdam and so on and the data which is the array. So let's go back down here. So we're looping through that array. For each city we find we're passing the weather into everything we want to use inside this particular section. And the first thing we want to do is draw a line mark. So it's going to draw the line graph. For that, we're going to use weather.month. So if we go back up to our array, because we're calling the data when it comes in weather, then weather.month will give us January, value will be 81. So that allows us to actually draw the line mark. Using the cat mul rom interpolation method just to make it curvy and look nice. I'm not bothered about the statistical way in which the graph is constructed. And then the line stroke, the thickness of the line is going to be dependent on the selected city. So at the very beginning, we select selected city to zero. And zero in the array is New York, which comes first here. So that will then change the stroke width. So when the city is coming in, i.e. the city in the, the loop here, matches the city data selected city, then will either be six or two, and that will change this line weighting. If I change this to 16 and refresh the preview, you should see the red line get thicker. Sometimes it may just need a little bit of encouragement to rebuild that. Here we go. There we go, we've got a stupidly big line. So let's just get rid of that number 16 and change it back to six. And let's just try that again. And again, it may need a little bit of encouragement just to rebuild the preview. And we'll wait a moment or two while that's doing that. There we go, and we're back to where we are. And then we'll also add in a point mark based on the same data, so we're using the same values just to put the little uh, points on the lines. And then we're going to make sure that we're setting the style. So we're going to go by city by city. So the city value that comes in here the city, i.e. New York or Amsterdam, we want to have it so that they're all different uh, values on the same graph. And then we're going to actually set the foreground style state. So this is going to make sure that we're using the values in our city data, i.e. city zero is New York, city New York point two, i.e. this particular value up here, so this is zero, flag is one, color is red. And this will allow us to change the colors as we're going through. Okay, and then finally we've got the symbol scales there for all of the charts. And we're adding some padding and we're setting a frame height. If I was cha to change New York, for example, to be, uh, let's go for mint, then you would see the graph change once it updates itself, which is, seems to be taking a few moments at the moment for some reason. There we go, it's changed to mint. So let's change it back to red. Okay, and refresh that view. There we go. And it's gone back to the full preview, so let's just do that little flipping around. Again, it's beta software, and we've got to make allowances for that. So now that we've got the first chart in place, let's put the second chart in place. So the first thing that we need to do here is to add a, a title. And let's just flip back and forwards, as you see me do that earlier, and rebuild that preview. So now we've got New York and the New York USA flag. And this is actually, let me just indent this a little bit better, like so. You can see that the text is going to take the city data such a city so zero one or two it's going to take the first value new york and it's going to take the flag value as one and just put it in there again i apologize for the fact that xcode is doing some really funky things with a preview that's what it should look like the final step 
is to actually just put in the chart that we need and it's really quite easy because we're only using one chart now so we're going to use a selected city value to actually put that in there and again I'll just do some indenting so you can actually read all this better let's just do that there we go so we're going to say for the selected city data put the weather create a bar mark using the same values as we did further up but it's going to be a mar mark bar mark we're then going to set the foreground style to the color of the selected city a 0.2 in that city data and then we're going to set the background as well with the slight opacity and a gradient and that is the application and now if I select a location oops, I can select Amsterdam and you can see how everything changes the line width changes when I select a city and also the bottom chart changes it in terms of the data and the colors that we use so it's really quite easy to do uh, so please feel free to experiment with this and make it work for you